You're listening to Puma Podcast. Hello YouTube boss Rino, welcome to my channel. So ito, ang dami niyo nag-request itong Bobo Tante 2. Ba, may Bobo Tante 2? So may Bobo Tante 1 na pala. Alam mo, pag may usap-usapan sa mga politiko, ganyan, ang usap-usapan dyan, magpakatanga ka lang, magpakaklown ka lang, entertainin mo lang sila, boboto ka na. Ibig sabihin nun, Bobo Tante kayo. Bobo Tante kayo, yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Hi, I'm Oya Ariola, Principal Consultant at Wise Owl, a strategy firm specializing in communication for social change. I am also a co-host of the podcast Give a Hoot, a proud member of the Puma Podcast Network. At Wise Owl, we work a lot with civil society organizations, and if they could take away just two things from our workshops and collaborations, I hope these are that. Number one, effective communication is an exercise in humility. And number two, humility involves constant listening. Let's unpack that a bit. First, humility is important because to communicate well, we have to regard the audience's viewpoint as more important than our own. As advocates, we are almost always confident in the importance of the issues we carry, the correctness of our views. But the goal really is not to prove ourselves the best and the smartest, and certainly not to show the other side up or prove them wrong. Occasionally, some groups ask me for help with a position statement about a hot issue or policy proposal. I'd come up with a draft in simple language, short, three paragraphs max, half a page as much as possible. I'd send it for approval. Then someone revises it into a four-page paper. We just love to demonstrate that we have the sharpest, most comprehensive analysis, don't we? It just becomes a vanity paper that no one except people who already think like us will read. Sometimes not even them. Communication for social change is all about persuasion. And to convince our audience towards our point of view, and to spur them to action even, we have to leave our ego at the door. Now, many of us are thinking, at this time of fake news and disinformation, we have to push the facts about our specific issue so that our audiences can make an educated opinion which would, of course, be in line with our side. But while countering this information is important, that objective will require a totally separate campaign. For communication about social change issues, facts by themselves are not sufficient to persuade. As the Center for Story-Based Strategy says, quote, having the facts on our side and defining our policy proposals are very important. However, As cognitive science has shown us, when a fact challenges a cherished pre-existing belief, the majority of people will dismiss the fact. The facts alone are simply not enough to change hearts and minds. Instead, we need to make the important facts meaningful to people in order to make them receptive to new information. End quote. The truth of our claims is essential, but facts only serve as a supporting details. To make our message compelling, we have to attach meaning that resonates with our audience. And to do that, we have to start with what's important to them, what their concerns are, what moves them, who influences them, their viewpoint. Getting that and therefore really getting them is key. Which brings us now to the second point. The crucial skill in communication is listening. Through surveys and focus group discussions, yes, but also by being where your audiences are, by talking to them on the ground, listening to them on social media and the like. By truly listening, we benefit from the real experts on the lives of our audience, themselves. And gaining a deeper understanding of who they are will serve you well at every stage of communication. As you design, you plan, you execute, and you assess your campaigns. Your messages will become more resonant without having to water it down, in air quotes, uh, to your audience's level, air quotes again. You will be able to use frames and stories that make them immediately receptive to what you want to say. You will be interacting with them in relevant channels and events. Now, we've noticed that increasingly, especially during election campaigns, but also around important policy issues, 
we tend to waste free and valuable resources for listening. I'm talking about market research results that firms like Pulse Asia and Social Weather Station come out with. So many useful insights and lessons can be learned by analyzing the data. However, when the results are not in our favor, there's a tendency by some groups to dismiss them and cast doubt on the methodology, the motivation for the study, or even the research firm itself. This is such a mistake. First, in an environment where there are so many dubious sources of information, casting doubt on credible sources that Filipinos can turn to is unhelpful. Second, we fail to learn from those results to inform, assess, and adjust our campaigns to make them more effective. Ronald Holmes of Pulse Asia puts it well in his Head Start interview with Karen Davila on ANC. Because the, the results do not favor you, to me, is a little bit irrational. Uh, well, I, I would understand because that's what you would expect from someone who's a partisan. That if the surveys do not show results that are favorable to the one that you're supporting or to you yourself as a candidate, then the best way to deflect attention away from the survey is to question the survey. But uh, I would caution them in terms of going to the extent of shooting the messenger because they would have to realize that the message is very important and it's something that should assist them in calibrating their strategies. Listening also means being aware of what others are doing and talking about. Not just what's being said by those who think like us, but especially by people who don't. So let's say you're in the middle of a campaign. On social media, the people you follow are sharing your campaign's content or attacking the other side even. And their profile photos include an endorsement of your side. You meet up with friends and they are wearing the campaign colors. You see the other side's TV ad and you think, Bah! All emotion, no substance. Nobody's going to fall for that. You attend the campaign rallies and you see that people are joining in record numbers. You say to yourself, OMG, we're going to win for sure. Then the survey results come out and it shows you trailing by quite a bit. Instead of learning from it, you ask, how can this be? The survey must have been commissioned by the other side and rigged in order to condition people's minds. But think about it. Did your social media content clearly state what you're for? Was it being shared to people outside your circle? After your meetup, did you and your friends also reach out to persuadables? Or did you just avoid conversations with those leaning towards the other side because you didn't want to get into an argument with them? Just maybe, did the other side's emotional ad succeed in building affinity and tapping into the audience's aspirations for the future? Aside from energizing supporters, did the rally serve to convert people who might not have made up their mind yet? It could very well be a failure to listen. If we only listen to like-minded people and groups, we could find ourselves in an echo chamber. And that could be misleading. When you're in an echo chamber, the number of allied voices seems multiplied. The volume of those voices seems amplified. Not only that, but you also can't hear the other voices outside. And it seems like yours is the dominant message. But in reality, you're just hearing yourself. To win campaigns, we have to expand reach. And by reach, we don't just mean the number of views and shares your content earns. Although those are important indicators, when you're in an echo chamber, views and shares become vanity metrics. Your message doesn't actually spread more widely. Communicators for social change should always be mindful of this. A couple of years ago, we created a Facebook page intended to serve as a lab for reaching the movable middle. Our wise out partner and Give a Hoot co-host Mika Ortega talked about the movable middle in our previous episode, so give it a listen. To check if our messages were working and if they were reaching the people we intended them for, our analytics partner did an audit. This audit was not a nice to have for us. It was essential in finding out if we were achieving our objective. Expanding our reach means successfully crossing the chasm between our base and the majority. There are strategies you can employ to do this, which do not require an impossibly large amount of money to carry out. What is crucial is humility and the ability to listen. 
Wise Owl offers workshops on these strategies and other topics I discussed in this episode. So if you're interested in learning more, shoot us an email. Again, I'm Oya Ariola, co-host of the Give a Hoot podcast. This episode was written by me and produced by Jill Caro. Our senior news editor is Veronica Uy, and our audio editor is Freddy Blanco. To learn more about Wise Owl's work, please visit wiseowl.ph. For questions, you can reach us by email at hoot at wiseowl.ph. That's H-O-O-T at wiseowl.ph. Don't forget to check out our podcast, Give a Hoot, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a five-star rating on your podcast app. At para sa mga mahilig manood sa YouTube, Puma Podcast na rin po kami doon. Just search Puma Podcast and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening 